Hear ye, hear ye, all persons who have anything to do before the Honorable, the United States District Court for the District of New Hampshire, now hold it at the University of New Hampshire School of Law, may draw near, give their attendance, and they shall be heard. God save the United States of America in this Honorable Court. Please be seated. Presiding over this morning's naturalization ceremony is Chief Justice Joseph LaPlante. Morning, everyone. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. The United States Citizenship and Immigration Service is here today represented by Anthony Violante, Maurice Violo, and Tom White. Mr. Violante has several matters to present to the court this morning. Mr. Violante. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. My name is Anthony Violante, and I am pleased to represent the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services within the Department of Homeland Security at these proceedings today. Your Honor, there are six applicants for naturalization present who wish to change their name as part of their naturalization. The government has investigated the reasons for these changes and interposes no objection. I respectfully move that all six name changes be granted. Hearing no objection, your motion is granted. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, there are 24 applicants for naturalization present from 13 different countries of origin here today. Each applicant has been duly examined under the provisions of the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952 as amended, and each applicant has been approved for naturalization. At this time, I respectfully move that you request the Clerk of the Court to administer the oath of allegiance to all 24 applicants, thus bestowing upon them one of our nation's highest honors, United States citizenship. Yes, sir. Clerk Starr, would you administer the oath of allegiance? Would all those applying for citizenship please stand? I'm about to administer to you the oath of allegiance to the United States of America. For your convenience, we have reprinted the oaths in the back of this morning's program. Will you please raise your right hands, keep them raised during the oath, and repeat after me. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure to all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or citizen, that I will support and defend the Constitution and the laws the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by law. That I will perform non-combatant services in the armed forces of the United States when required by law. And that I will perform work of national importance under civil directions when required by law. And that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion so help me God. Please be seated. Again, good morning, everyone. I want to uh, extend a warm welcome to all of you who have come to participate in and to witness this very important event. It's a great pleasure for me to participate in this ceremony today, and I want to thank uh, the University of New Hampshire School of Law for extending this invitation to us at the district court and the executive branch to uh, um, hold this important ceremony here. Before I make a few remarks and offer a few, hopefully, uh, hopeful, in, hopefully a few insights to you, um, 
I want to recognize a few people that have come to uh, share this event with you and with us uh, who, who are here today. First off, um, our governor, the Honorable Margaret Hassan, is here. Congresswoman Carol Shea Porter is here. <laughs> Dean John Broderick Jr. is here from the here. This is his home, of course, the law school. And uh, <laughs> as I used to address him, Chief Justice Broderick, when I practiced before his court uh, quite frequently. Also here with us today is uh, Professor Erin Corcoran. I, my understanding is it was her idea to hold this ceremony here at the law school, and I can't tell you what a wonderful idea I think. That is. There you are. We frequently hold these uh, naturalization ceremonies at the courthouse, I think once a month, um, usually with uh, upwards of how many? 350. The, huge groups. And we do them uh, once a month. And every time we do, uh, we share the ceremony with members of our legislative branch. They come, they come and attend. Uh, members of Congress, or they send their representatives. Uh, Congressman, Congress, Congresswoman Shea Porter is here today, um, and uh, she has personally attended, which is a great thrill for us. Um, other legislators uh, in our uh, delegation have also sent representatives. Uh, New Hampshire has two United States senators, Senator Kelly Ayotte and Senator, Senior Senator Gene Shaheen, and they have sent representatives. Um, Peter Clark is here from Senator Shaheen's office, and Robin Anderson is here from Senator Ayotte's office. Thank you. And my understanding is that Olga Clough is here from uh, Representative Shea Porter's office. Thank you. Let's see you. We also have a couple of law students here who have special roles. Ladea Irwin and Caitlin Turacek are here, and they're going to help us uh, with singing some patriotic songs and the like. And uh, we'll hear from them in a few moments. Um, before we do that, I want to congratulate all of our new citizens. This is a day that will be remembered by you by your families and friends as one of the most significant days in your lives and a very happy occasion for all of you. This is also a significant day for our nation because the strength and greatness of our nation are due in part to the diversity of its people. You started your journey towards citizenship in this great country from 13 different countries. I'd like to acknowledge by name each country of origin of each of our new citizens. As I read each country of origin, I would ask those of you who are originally from that country to stand and briefly just remain standing through the list. It's not a very long list today as I proceed through the list of countries. Brazil. Canada. India. Jamaica. Ghana, Kenya, Kosovo, Mexico, Morocco, Portugal, Thailand, Trinidad and Tobago, and the United Kingdom. Now you walked in here today as citizens of many countries and within a matter of minutes took an oath and have become Americans, citizens of the United States of America. You now share that common bond with each other and with millions of other Americans. Our nation will be that much stronger because of you. Please be seated. Now from time to time, misguided individuals try to turn our diversity into divisiveness and to suit their own purposes. However, whenever that happens, we Americans stand shoulder to shoulder and will continue to do so in order to rebuke such efforts. Whatever may be happening in our world, one of the highest obligations as Americans is to treat each other with dignity, respect, and understanding. Each of you had your own reason for seeking U.S. citizenship. Some of you have sought U.S. citizenship for economic opportunity, others to avoid political or religious restraint or oppression. Others came here to be with family or loved ones. Whatever your reason for seeking U.S. citizenship, it is my hope that you understand and accept both your privileges and your responsibilities as a citizen of this country. Today, you gain the full rights of citizenship, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of association, 
the right to vote for your government leaders, and the right to enjoy a free press. In fact, all the protections of the Constitution, which the court where I preside, is dedicated to protecting. America is one of the freest nations ever to have existed. In no other nation of the world do citizens enjoy the rights, liberties, and privileges enjoyed by American citizens. Our freedom, however, has not come easy. Many men and women, particularly those who have served in our nation's armed forces, have given much, including their lives, to protect and defend our freedom. Each of us must also do our part to protect our freedom. Citizenship involves more, as you know, than taking an oath. With the rights conferred by citizenship come the responsibilities of being a good citizen. And it is through exercising your rights and responsibilities given to you by the United States Constitution that you become a good citizen. I urge you to study our Declaration of Independence and especially our Constitution so that you can better understand for yourselves what your rights and liberties are. Not only should you educate yourselves about these important documents that are the very foundation of our democratic society, but you should teach your children and your grandchildren about them. Our President, Barack Obama, spoke of our U.S. Constitution in his first inaugural address. He said, quote, Our founding fathers, faced with perils that we can scarcely imagine, drafted a charter to assure the rule of law and the rights of man, a charter expanded by the blood of generations. That charter that President Obama spoke of was the United States Constitution. He went on to say, quote, America has carried on not simply because of the skill or vision of those in high office, but because we the people, the first words of the Constitution, we the people, have remained faithful to the ideals of our forebears and true to our founding documents. Close quote. Again, those founding documents are Declaration of Independence and our Constitution. Your responsibilities to yourself, to your new, co your new country, and your new fellow citizens is to help protect those rights by exercising them. Exercise your right to vote, to speak out on issues of importance to you and your country, and to worship in the religion of your choice. The only way to receive the full benefits of citizenship of the United States is to exercise your rights, and I encourage you to do so. I also urge you to participate in your government, again by voting, by serving willingly on juries when you are called to do so, by being active in the affairs of your town, city, county, and state, and by serving on public boards, seeking elective office if called upon to do so, serving our, our, in our armed forces, or performing alternative service. President Abraham Lincoln, in his famous Gettysburg Address, spoke of government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Our democracy will remain vibrant only if we, the people, participate in our own governance. A hundred years later, in his inaugural address, President John Kennedy reminded the American people of the duty we owe to our country when he said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Now, as of this day, your country is the United States of America. Only through our active participation in our government, in our eternal vigilance in defense of our nation, will the flame of liberty be kept burning for future generations of Americans. On behalf of all of us, whom you today join as citizens, I want to thank you for joining us. We thank you for coming here to share your experience, your talents, your enthusiasm, your culture, your traditions, and your diversity. The greatest strength of this country has always been the way in which we contribute our diverse backgrounds, share them with each other, and become better and stronger for it. Again, thank you for choosing us to share citizenship with. We welcome you. What I'd like to do now is ask our governor, the Honorable Margaret Hassan, to offer us a few remarks. Good morning, Mr. Chief Judge. Good morning to all of you. Welcome. Congratulations for achieving one of the highest privileges known to the world, American citizenship. America is truly the greatest nation on earth, and you have not chosen a better state 
than New Hampshire. You could not have chosen a better state than New Hampshire. We are a state that welcomes all people who wish to contribute their talent and energy to the life of our state. Inclusiveness is a part of our history. Over the decades, we have welcomed waves of new citizens, from the Irish and French Canadian immigrants of the 19th century, to the immigrants from Greece in the 20th century, and to all of you and so many others who are reinvigorating our state today. As has been true throughout our history, every time we bring more people into the heart and soul of our democracy, we grow stronger. I know this accomplishment took hard work and sacrifice, and I commend each and every one of you for your dedication. You now have the full rights, liberties, and importantly, responsibilities that all American citizens and Granite Staters have. In New Hampshire, we have what I like to call an all-hands-on-deck ethos. Whenever there is a challenge, our people are ready to help and pitch in, whether it's friends and neighbors coming together to the assistance of a family struggling with an illness or our largely volunteer form of government. We are a state that uniquely combines independence and community. I urge you to value your citizenship by becoming full and active participants in your communities. Seek to make a difference and support those around you, even in small ways. Today, you took an oath to support and defend the constitution of our great nation. That sacred document is the lifeblood of our society. At the time it was written, our founders' notion that we could operate as both a true citizen democracy and become a strong, vibrant economy was truly a revolutionary one. And I'd add to the Chief Judge's recommendation to read the Constitution and the Declaration, also read some of the biographies of our early founders and understand what true tension and give and take and difficulty they faced as they supported this revolutionary notion that people could actually govern themselves and become stronger as a result. Because to some degree, our ability to prove that our founders were right depends on our actions today as citizens. I hope you will all help us prove them right by valuing the responsibility of citizenship and by working to strengthen your communities. Congratulations again. Though you come from, I think it was 13 different nations from around the world, you are now all Americans and Granite Staters. Welcome. Now please join me in welcoming for a few remarks, uh, Dean John Broderick, uh, Your Honor. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the law school, but more importantly, welcome to the rule of law in the United States. I had the occasion some years ago to speak to a group of new citizens. I remember it vividly. I admire you greatly for what you're doing and what you will be doing. All my grandparents came here from Ireland, so I'm a second generation American. When I was a young child, I would visit my grandmother, Broderick, on a Sunday afternoon with my father. She was an Irish citizen. She had come here at 16 by herself. It was stunning what she did. And on those Sunday afternoons on that beautiful screen porch, she would be telling stories of what she described as the old country, Ireland. And she still had a brogue. She wasn't letting that go. At 92, she still had a brogue even though she had spent 76 years in America. My father had no brogue, and my father went further than his father. And in terms of education, I went further than my own father. There will be people a generation or two from now that will remember you as fondly and as courageously as I remember my grandmother. You're making a difference not only in your own life, but in the lives of many other people. A judge plan told you that you have rights, and you have many rights in America. 
But what distinguishes us, I think, is not just our rights, but our commitment to be responsibly engaged in American life. Please do that. Governor Hassan's right. You are in the best state in the United States. I'm a native of Massachusetts. I still believe that, by the way. <laughs> you chose wisely, very wisely. This is a great country because of you, because of all of you. So welcome to America. Welcome to American citizenship. Welcome to New Hampshire. And I challenge all of you to have someone two generations from now talking about you in the same way I felt about my grandmother. You're pretty remarkable people. And it's an honor to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Broderick and Governor Hassan. I need to echo one thing um, about the country and state you've chosen. It is the greatest country in the world, and it is the greatest state in this country. We have a little ritual in my house. I have three children, and uh, they've gotten kind of tired of it, but they know what to say. When I say to them, what's the greatest state in this country? They kind of roll their eyes and they say, New Hampshire, Pop. <laughs> they know. Sounds funny, but I mean it, and so do they, I hope. One of our traditions in the United States is to pledge our allegiance to our flag. It's a custom here to pledge our allegiance of loyalty to our flag, which we refer to as old glory. Of course, it's really our country to which we pledge our allegiance and loyalty, not the flag. And although our flag is merely a wonderful symbol of our nation, American soldiers have literally given their lives to protect it. Between 1707 and 1960, Congress passed several acts that changed the shape, design, and arrangement of the flag and allowed stars and stripes to be added to reflect the admission of each new state. Today, the flag consists of 13 horizontal stripes and seven alternating, seven red alternating with six white. The stripes represent the original 13 colonies. The stars represent the 50 states of the Union. And the colors are symbolic as well. Red symbolizes hardiness and valor. White symbolizes purity and innocence. And blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and my personal favorite, justice. The Pledge of Allegiance in its original form was written by Francis Bellamy, who was an ordained minister and magazine writer. He wrote it in 1892 as part of the 400th anniversary of, Ameri of uh, the journey to America by Christopher Columbus. The pledge was well received by the nation, and when it was first published, it almost immediately began to be recited by school children every morning at school. The Congress, the, uh, the Congress of the United States officially recognized the pledge in 1942. We have a couple of uh, special guests to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, uh, Professor Galinsky from the University of New Hampshire, a new citizen, and David Colsar, a student here at the law school. Uh, it's our, it's our, you all know this, but it's our custom and tradition here when we pledge allegiance to stand, face the flag, and place our hands over our hearts. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Congratulations, you all. We've got patriotic songs, too, along with it. Yep. Oh, Okay. Oh, thank you. Clerk Star just reminded me of something I didn't notice. Well, it's, it's one of our, like many countries, one of our great traditions here in customs is to sing patriotic songs. I have told you that Ledea Irwin and Caitlin Turacek were here, and they are going to lead us in a patriotic song, America the Beautiful. Please. Beautiful for space. 
gracious skies for amber waves of grain for purple mountains majesty above the fruited plain America America God shed his grace on thee Now, another one of our traditions here is to sing our national anthem. <laughs> America won its independence from Great Britain in the 1770s. In 1814, unfortunately, the British and the Americans were at war again on American soil. In preparing for the Battle of Baltimore, U.S. Major General George Armistad requested a huge flag. The Major asked for a flag so large that the British would have no difficulty in seeing it from a distance as it flew over Fort McHenry, which at that time was the American fort protecting the city of Baltimore. Mary Pickersgill of Baltimore was commissioned to construct the flag. With the help of her daughter, she sewed a woolen flag that measured 42 feet long by 30 feet high. As Major Armistead had requested, a huge flag. The flag had 15 stars and 15 stripes because at that time there were 15 states in the Union. The British attacked Fort McHenry on September 13, 1814. A Washington attorney by the name of Francis Scott Key watched as the British Navy bombarded Fort McHenry. He watched the rocket's red glare and the bombs bursting in air all through the night. When dawn broke, he expected to see the city of Baltimore and Fort McHenry under the firm control of the British. To his surprise, he saw the battered American flag still flying over the fort. Inspired by the valiant effort of the American forces defending Fort McHenry and the city of Baltimore, Francis Scott Key wrote a poem, which eventually became our national anthem in 1931. Now, Ledea and Caitlin are going to lead us now in the national anthem. Again, like the pledge, it's our custom here to stand, face the flag, and place our hands over our hearts during the anthem. early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly Streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave? Well, with that, I will just thank you again for choosing us to share your citizenship with. We are thrilled to have you, and I want to wish you well on your journey through life as American citizens. I'll now turn it over to Deputy Clerk Valerie Allen. Hear ye. All, all proceedings before this special session of the United States District Court for the District of New Hampshire, having been concluded, court is now adjourned. God save the United States of America and this honorable court. Thank you. That's the conclusion of our ceremony. We're going to be having a congratulatory line downstairs in the atrium. We're going to ask 
the judge and the dignitaries to meet us down there while we pass out certificates to all the new citizens. Everybody is invited down there for family and friends with the new citizen they're here with today. Myself and Tracy will be available for anybody who has cameras and would like us to take a photo of the group. 